The year was 80 AD, and the Flavian Amphitheater, which we now refer to as the Roman Colosseum, opened its gates. Started under the reign of Emperor Vespasian, the Colosseum was finished when his son Titus became emperor. The seating capacity of the Colosseum was 50,000, an enormous size for the time. Seen from above, the Colosseum is elliptical in shape. It was 188 meters long and 156 meters wide. It was also 50 meters high, or roughly the height of a 12-story building. Part of what held the Colosseum together and allowed for such a grand structure to be built was concrete. The Romans originated the use of concrete and this substance contributed to the longevity of many Roman buildings. Long before the Colosseum became the center of bloody gladiatorial fights, it was used to reenact famous naval battles from ancient history. The grounds were flooded with water, allowing ships to float and simulate the condition of a battle at sea. Yet, of the many battles fought in this stadium throughout the centuries, the very first battle fought on these grounds may have been mathematical. How were the Romans able to build such a large elliptical structure? Why not a circular building? As you have seen, constructing a circle is easy. Take a compass, define a center point, and sweep out a circle. A circle is the locus of points equidistant from a center point. A Roman surveyor, using the surveying tool of the time, the groma, could accurately create a straight line marking the distance from one point to another. This way, a locus of points defining a circle of whatever size could easily be marked and a circular structure could be built. This is why circular buildings are relatively easy to create. If we let the surveyor represent the center of the circle, then the surveyor can determine a number of radii which can be used as the framework for the circular structure. In fact, most circular structures are made up of an embedded regular polygon framework. The vertices of the polygon are what the surveyor mapped out. The ease of creating a circular structure is in stark contrast to the difficulty of creating an elliptical one. The geometry of the ellipse presents some steep challenges. First, the ellipse has two points that are the equivalent to the circle's center. These two points are called the foci. The ellipse is the locus of points such that the sum of the distances from the foci to the ellipse is a constant. Here is one way to construct an ellipse. Take a loop of string, two thumbtacks, a pencil, and a sheet of paper. Tack the paper on a bulletin board or a similar surface with the two thumbtacks. These tacks represent the foci of the ellipse you are about to construct. Place the loop of string around the tacks. Take the pencil and extend the string so that you end up with a triangular shape as shown. These two sides of the triangle represent the distances to the foci from the vertex of the triangle. This vertex is a point on the ellipse. Keep the string taut and move the pencil to different locations, in the process constructing the ellipse. As you move the pencil around, the side lengths of the triangle change, but the total amount of string that represents both sides is constant. In other words, the sum of the lengths of the two sides of the triangle is constant, fulfilling the requirement of an ellipse. Constructing an ellipse this way is straightforward, but transferring that technique to the world of surveying and the construction of buildings, especially during the time of the Romans, is a challenge. The simple situation of one surveyor defining a number of radii becomes two surveyors whose measurements must align at a third point and the sum of their separate measurements must be a constant. Furthermore, this third point, the one on the ellipse, is constantly changing its location and changing the two side lengths of the triangle. This would have been very difficult to achieve without resulting in an inaccurate curve. Furthermore, constructing architectural plans or blueprints for an elliptical structure would have been impossible since there's no way to construct an ellipse using a compass and a straight edge. So why did the Romans build an elliptical stadium? And how did they do it? The first question is easy to answer. Since an ellipse is a wider version of a circle, then the larger area would result in more available stadium seats. For example, here is a circle of radius r, and here is an ellipse of width 2r and length 4r. The area of the circle is pi r squared, while the area of the ellipse is 2 pi r squared twice the area of the circle. 
The perimeter of the ellipse, on the other hand, is only 50% longer than that of the circle. This means that the cost of materials to build an elliptical structure of twice the area of the circle is not twice the cost. So there's an economical reason for building an elliptical structure. The answer to the second question, how did they do it, is more difficult to answer. Because of the condition of the Colosseum, it makes it difficult to make a final determination about how it was built. There is evidence to suggest that the Romans used circular arcs to approximate the shape of an ellipse. Let's analyze how this would work. Here is an ellipse proportional to the arena portion of the Colosseum. It is possible to overlay a series of circles, so that portions of each circle overlaps the curve of the ellipse. For now, we will look at just the portion of the curve in the XY coordinate system's quadrant 1. Piecing together the three arcs shown, reveals a curve remarkably close to that of the ellipse. Since this ellipse-like shape is actually made up of circles, then once again the engineering challenges are no different than for a circular structure. This would have eliminated the insurmountable obstacle to building the Colosseum. Let's use the TI Inspire to explore this construction. <laughs> 